TCPIP, the Internet Suite of Protocols, part of HowTCPIPWorks.com. TCPIP, the Internet Suite of Protocols. In this section, we will introduce what the Internet Suite of Protocols is. We'll also have a quick definition of protocols to bring us up to speed. We will then look at a partial list of the Internet's suite of protocols. These are the protocols that we will be talking about in these next sections. Um, we'll look at the Internet suite of protocols in the context of different protocol models, including the OSI model. We'll have a brief history of the Internet suite of protocols, and then we'll talk about which protocols we cover in the sections how tcpipworks.com, and then some of the other protocols we uh, talk about in learntcpip.com. The Internet suite of protocols. Now, the Internet suite of protocols is sometimes referred to as TCPIP or just IP, but regardless if you call it by its proper name, the Internet suite of protocols, or by its familiar name, TCPIP or just IP, it is a suite or a family or a group of related protocols. And while TCP is a single protocol and IP is a protocol, when you're talking about communications on the Internet, and you're using IP or TCP IP, you're using a group of protocols. Now these protocols are standards and they are described in documents called RFCs or requests for comments. Now the creation of these protocols is overseen by a independent organization called the Internet Society. Now the Internet Society has a number of related sub-organizations that really do the day-to-day -day work of creating these protocols and defining the protocols. And if you want more information on that, please go to www.isoc.org. Now, the current version of the Internet Suite of Protocols, or what we're going to just call is IP, is IP version 4. Now, that's the one that's in use on the Internet and used by most computer systems uh, made today. Now, the next version, IP version 6, is under development, and much of it is already developed, and it's an open question to when and the internet moved to IP version 6. Some people say it's a, it will happen in a few years. Some people will say it will take a number of years to do this conversion. But there's no question that IP version 4, the one we'll be covering in this course, is the current one and will be continued to use for some time. Now the thing about IP version 4, or I guess it should be called the Internet Suite of Protocols, uh, is it available? It, it is available on just about every computer system available today. And for that reason, it's pretty much the standard for communicating between two different types of computers. In addition, it is the sole suite, the only suite or group of protocols that are used on the Internet. So to get on the Internet, you will generally have to be running TCP IP, or should I say the Internet suite of protocols. Protocols. In this course, we're going to be talking a lot about protocols, so it's good to start with a definition of what is a protocol. Now, a protocol is nothing more than a set of rules or guidelines that govern the communication between different networking devices. Now, the truth is, is that when you're networking, you're never using a single protocol. You're using lots of different protocols working together. Now, for instance, IP is a protocol, the Internet protocol, or TCP is a protocol. And when you're using TCPA, IP to do networking, you're not just using IP or just TCP, but you're using IP, TCP, probably UDP, maybe ICPM, and a whole number of other related protocols. Now, protocols are organized into suites or families of protocols, and there's a number of different families of protocols. For instance, there's the Internet Suite of Protocol that we refer to as TCP IP, but if you're from a network environment, uh, in the past, you were using the IPX SPX suite of protocols. Now, again, this is a suite of protocols. IPX is a single protocol, SPX is a single protocol, but there are other protocols that are part of that family. Now, in addition, there's the Apple Talk family of protocols. In the IBM mainframe world, there's the SNA family of protocols, and then also there's the DECnet of family of protocols, and there are other ones also. The Internet suite of protocols, a partial list. Here is a list of key internet protocols. These are the internet protocols we'll be talking about in our next sections. And I've chosen these because if you understand how these protocols work, you have a good insight to how data is really transferred on networks and on the internet. Now, as I mentioned, this is not all the protocols in the internet suite of protocols. There's a great number of other ones. But these are the key ones that 
will be investigating. The Internet Suite of Protocols, Protocol Models. On the right, you can see we have a block diagram of the seven-layer OSI model. In the middle, we have a block diagram of the Internet Suite, or TCPIP suite of protocols, matching up with the OSI model. By understanding the OSI model and the functions of the different layers and how each of the protocols within the Internet Suite of Protocols match up with the OSI model, then we have an insight into which functions and which activities each of the TCP IP protocols provide. Now, for historical purposes, you should be aware of that there was a model that the TCP IP suite was developed under called the Internet, sometimes called the DOD model. Now, this is a four layer model rather than the OSI model, seven layer model, and you can see that the TCP IP suite of protocols also matches up to that. Now, you really don't hear much discussion about the Internet or DOD model anymore. Really, everything is compared to the OSI model. The Internet suite of protocol, history, and some key dates. In 1974, the original specification for TCP was published. And it's important to know is at that point in time, there was no IP. All the functions of TCP and IP were combined into a single specification for TCP. In 1978, uh, TCP was split into two different protocols, the ones we know today, TCP and IP, and, and in 1981, the final specification for IP was published. In 1980, the UDP specification was published. In 1982, the ARP specification was published. So you can see by the early 80s, most of the specifications for the key protocols had been developed. Now, 1983, that was a key date for TCP IP for a couple reasons. Number one is the ARPANET. Now the ARPANET was the predecessor to the Internet of today. The ARPANET required that all computers, all hosts that connected to the ARPANET must be running TCP IP. In addition, a version of Unix was released. This is version 4.2 BSD was released with networking and the networking that was chosen was TCP IP. Now that was important because most computer science departments for colleges used Unix at that time. And so we had a situation in 1983 where the Internet of the day started using TCP IP and most of the colleges started using TCP IP for networking. Now in 1987, DNS specification was published. It had been actually in use before then, but then the next important day was 1993. Now in 1993 was really the beginning of the internet of today and it was for two reasons now number one in 1993 mosaic was introduced now mosaic was the first graphical web browser and it's really the basis of netscape and internet explorer today in addition in 1993 the national science foundation which had been running the internet of that day which was called the nfs backbone specified the creation of network access points and the network access points are the basis of the Internet today. And again, um, all connectivity to the Internet requires TCP IP. HowTCPIPWorks.com Now this is an educational website meant for network technicians who need to know about the TCP IP suite of protocols. Now this website is not meant to be inclusive. It does not cover all the protocols in the TCP IP suite of protocols, nor does it cover any of the specific protocols in complete detail. It's just meant to give network technicians a general background on how these protocols work together. The hope is that this information will make them better at their job and if they do have a desire to learn more about these protocols they'll be in a position to easily understand any of the hundreds and hundreds of books and different data sources there are on TCP IP. The presentation starts out with how Ethernet works. Now Ethernet and 802.3 is not part of the Internet suite of protocols. However, because of its widespread use, I felt it was important that we do cover it. Then we go to how IP or the Internet protocol works. Then we talk about how TCP works. Then we'll uh, briefly talk about UDP and also HTTP and HTML as part of browsing. Now then we bring it on all together on how networking works. Now how networking works is an important presentation because it uses the information in all the other sections to actually build packets and see how packets are transferred over the network.
learntcpip.com. Now, in order to really understand TCPIP, it's, it's valuable to check out these other resources. Before starting the TCPIP section, go to howtheosimodelworks.com. This will give you a good understanding of the OSI model. In addition, you'll probably want to take a look at howdnsworks.com to get an understanding of the domain naming system. Uh, Howtheinternetruns.com is a, an interesting presentation because it talks about how all the networks of the world interconnect to create the internet. Now, you'll probably want to also take a look at learntosubnet.com because this is a great site to understand how IP addressing works. And one of the presentations in learntosubnet.com is our the address resolution protocol. Now, all these sites can be accessed through learntcpip.com or by links from any of the other presentations.